Hi, welcome everybody. We are going to do a quick tutorial of the technical skills you'll need to get started in teletherapy. I'm Summer Johnson with the Stepping Stones Group, and we are going to cover four basic areas, uh, or what we refer to as labs. So we'll first cover just the basic essentials of your equipment and workspace that you'll need to get started, a quick touch on Google Gmail, and then we will cover um, Google Calendar and Google Meet. Now the first two labs we'll do in a slide format, uh, just content to review, and then the last two labs, labs three and four, we're gonna do live so you can actually see those platforms in motion. Um, so the goal here is to just make sure you're feeling uh, competent and comfortable and ready to go so that you can really focus on the therapy itself. Now, Sarah Jordan does a really great clinical webinar available to you uh, to kind of review the clinical end of teletherapy, how to develop digital materials, and, pro and she provides lots of different resources, um, how to manipulate or navigate through different um, materials or activities during your session, how to engage the students, strategies, things like that. So our goal today is really just to um, make sure you're feeling comfortable with the technology itself, as I said, so that you can focus on the therapy. So let's get started. And as we do that, just a reminder that we do encourage questions. You'll see a Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. So as we move forward, please don't hesitate to ask questions as they come to you. We'll either answer in the Q&A box itself, or we will answer live at the end and we'll address those questions. So please don't hesitate. Um, so let's get started on just the general stuff and space that you'll need to get started. So for essential equipment, the first thing is you'll need broadband internet connection, and that can be a Wi-Fi connection, certainly not any shared or public Wi-Fi. So if you've got your personal Wi-Fi that is password protected, that will work just fine. Um, <clears throat> and better yet, if you have uh, an ethernet cord connection from your router to your computer, to your laptop, um, that can sometimes provide for a, ma a more stable connection using video conferencing, but both will work just fine. And um, might be silly to note, but you're gonna be working from a laptop likely, and you may be in back-to-back -back sessions and that battery power depletes quickly. So as you're setting up your workspace, just make sure you are uh, near an outlet and that you've got plug-in uh, to that outlet and that you remain plugged in as, as much as possible so that you're not stuck um, <laughs> trying, to, trying to get juice in a critical moment during a therapy session. Um, and if you can, it's not required, but it is recommended if you do have a surge protected battery backup that you can plug your laptop into, that will help in case you get a glitch in your um, electricity. Maybe there's a storm, you're in the middle of a session. If you get any sort of, of um, glitch in power, it will drop your internet connection and then you'd have to connect with the parent and, and restart your entire meeting. So if you've got this option available, it is good to use for that purpose. And then obviously you're gonna need uh, audio and video capability. So most laptops today come with an integrated video, uh, integrated webcam. But if for some reason you don't have that, there are external webcams available out there on the market that you could use. And then for audio, we recommend a headset. And that can be in the form of earbuds with, with a microphone capability or an actual headset with a boom mic, which sometimes provides for better sound quality and clarity, but either one will work. And then as a third option, you can always just use the computer's um, speaker and microphone. We just ask if you use this option, make sure you are in a private room where there is nobody else in the room so that you can ensure that student's confidentiality during the session. So for those audio and video controls, you want to check your settings <clears throat> on your computer. Uh, this is 
more important, I think, if you've got several devices um, as options, you just want to make sure you've got the right output and input selected, and you can even test your devices here as well. And then another layer to that would be checking your um, audio and video permissions on your, on your computer. So if you plan to use any additional um, uh, applications, I guess, within your therapy session, sometimes they require specific permissions to access your camera and microphone. So this is basically where you would go and check those permissions. So let's talk about the actual workspace. Uh, I think what is gonna be most um, different for you is, is the change from running around from classroom to classroom, maybe visiting several school sites in a day uh, to a suddenly very sedentary sitting position. And it can take a toll on your body. So I just wanna take a quick moment and address it because if you don't take proper precautions here, your body um, could take a toll. So make sure you are very mindful of you know, the chair, make sure you've got a comfortable chair and a footstool. You can fashion that out of a box or a crate. Um, make sure the height of your desk is in good proportion with your chair, things like that, because they do make a difference and it adds up when you are sitting there all day. And it's, it's different for, for most of you all. So um, be mindful of your posture throughout the day and get up and, and stand and take breaks if you can, even if it's a you know, 60 second, <laughs> a quick moment of a stretch in between or a 20 minute walk, anything like that that will help get you up and moving will make a huge difference. And you could even make shift a standing desk uh, out of crates and boxes, whatever works. So just, just make sure you are paying attention to your setup in this way so that you are taking care of your body. So for uh, additional notes, optional equipment that is highly recommended, it's not a necessity, but if you have a second monitor, it is a huge benefit. It just adds more virtual desktop space and you are able to bring up multiple windows and navigate with, with ease between different windows and, and applications throughout the day. It just makes for an, a more efficient workspace. Um, if you don't have a second monitor, you can actually use a, an old TV, you know, and things like that. So you can get creative with this. But if this is an option for you, we highly recommend it. Um, as with the external keyboard and mouse. So the laptop obviously comes with those functions, but if you have an option for an external keyboard and mouse, it can be uh, much more comfortable for the duration as you sit at your desk um, for back-to-back -back therapy sessions. So let's talk about lighting. It's, it's incredibly important. Uh, make sure you're not sitting in front of a window. Make sure you have additional lighting as needed. Maybe borrow a lamp from another room, things like that to make sure you are well lit and the student has clear visibility of your webcam. Um, I would also note just to make sure you're limiting background distractions. So you don't wanna set up your workspace in a room that has maybe a high traffic area behind you and you've got family members walking back and forth, things like that. So make sure to set up your workspace, uh, hopefully with just a solid wall behind you so you limit the student's distraction and they stay focused on you. And for noise, um, be mindful of ambient noise. There might be maybe a hum of a ceiling fan, things like that that might intrude on the sound quality. So you may be able to set up your desk in a, in a different area of the room to avoid those things. Um, and then again, we, we recommend the use of a headset to limit that background noise. And the biggest note I would make is to try and put your, your pets and your kids away if possible. It's good if you can have a door and if you can shut that door and, and everybody knows that you are working. Um, and honestly, the biggest culprit is usually barking dogs. <laughs> I myself, I work from home and I've got dogs. And so when I'm on an important call, I make sure to put the dogs away in the bedroom just in case I get a random UPS deliver, delivery. Uh, they usually sound the alarms and, and I won't be distracted by um, the barking. So that's hugely important to keep you focused and keep your student focused. 
Okay, so let's talk about uh, Gmail. I will only highlight a few things because at this point you all have received a uh, Gmail account. You've already logged in, but I do provide instruction on how to change your password, just simple instruction on how to compose a new email, reply, things like that. Um, we won't go into that here. It won't be a good use of our time, but if you have any questions about the Gmail platform itself, please do reach out um, at the end and I'll be happy to help. So uh, we're gonna get into the calendar and meet functions and we're gonna do that live, but I do wanna show you the guide that I'll send out to each of you after this webinar does have a step-by-step -step of each of these platforms. So as I click through, these are all things we're gonna be talking about here in a moment. <laughs> and so this will provide a good reference and resource for you. Um, we'll be talking through it, but this will, this will give you a good uh, go back and check as you practice kind of resource. So <clears throat> let me go to Google Calendar and we will get started. So here is Google Calendar, and you can get here by going to calendar.google.com. And you can navigate um, from any Google web page. You can navigate to any other platform. So by clicking on this menu option in the upper right-hand corner, I can toggle between my Gmail, my calendar, and Google Meet pretty easily. So that's another great way to get here. So if we click on calendar, <clears throat> I'll show you there are three main different view types. There are several others, but we'll go through what we see here is a weekly view. I can look at my calendar in a monthly view or a daily view. Those are probably the most common that you'll be using. And then in the upper left-hand corner, I can toggle and fast forward through days, weeks, months, whatever my view is set up to be. And let's create a new meeting. Let's uh, set up a therapy session. So in the upper left-hand corner, I can either click Create and build a new event that way, or I can just double click within the calendar itself on the approximate day and time, um, whether it's here or here, wherever I'm, I, um, I'm gonna be setting it up. I can double click and it will open up a new window so that I can create my meeting. So we will do that here. Remember to only use student's first name. And if the student is receiving multiple therapies, it might be helpful to actually list the therapy itself because the parent will be receiving the same thing on their end. <clears throat> so if, she's, if mom is managing between multiple therapies, it could be helpful for her. So we can check the date and the start and end time. The duration may default to 30 minutes or 60 minutes, but you can always change that duration. So let's say George is gonna get 45 minutes of therapy. And if this is just a one-time session, this was all I could schedule with the parent, I would leave it as is, where it says that it does not repeat. Uh, if I am able to set up a recurring schedule with mom, I would just click my options and we'll go all the way down to custom where we can have really any customization of recurrence here. So if we want George to have 45 minutes of therapy twice a week, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays, it would look like this. If it's just once a week on Fridays, it would look like this. Maybe it's every other week on Mondays, bi-weekly, it would look like this. So you can really play, you could even do monthly, um, so let's do, let's keep George at every week, he gets 45 minutes twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Let's try that. And then we can enter an end date, whether that be the end of the school year or if a particular student might be uh, being dismissed, you might have a date in mind, you could enter that here. So let's invite the parent. So under guests, we're going to actually type the parent's email address. And once I do that, the parent will show as a guest below. And then I wanna check the guest permissions underneath. Very important. Make sure that the guest permissions listed here are all unchecked. 
If anything's checked, make sure you are unchecking. <laughs> so very important for student confidentiality. We don't want the parent to forward this invitation to others. If you are having any group therapy sessions, we don't want parents to see other student or parent information. So uncheck all guest permissions. Over here on the left, we'll see that Google Meet is the uh, default video conferencing platform. And that populated once I entered the parent's email address. I can click this to expand and actually view the details of Google Meet, the specific link, for example. And I can select a notification reminder, um, whether that be push notification on my phone or laptop or an email notification. So I can customize this. I can add another email notification maybe the day prior. So in this scenario, 60 minutes before the session starts, every Tuesday and Thursday, I'll get a push notification reminder. And then the day before, I'll get an email reminder. Now the parent will not see or receive these reminders unless they might have Google Calendar. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is you know, these reminders are, are coming to you. Let that be a prompt to reach out to the parent. Um, the more reminders you provide them, probably the better. <laughs> and so whether that's phone or email or text, um, it will just reduce the quantity of, of um, maybe tardiness or even no-shows for your sessions. So I would use this as a prompt to manually remind the parent if you can. So at the bottom, here is a description box. You could use this for notes to the parent. If um, you have specific goals you wanted to relay, or importantly for, for preparation, if you've got a particular idea in mind for a therapy session and you need the parent to help you prep um, materials and make sure that those materials are ready at the student's um, desk when you get started, this would be a perfect spot to put that in. You could also even um, attach documents. So if you have a specific reference material or letter to the parent, anything like that, you could actually attach it here. So all this information that we've created in this invite, the parent will receive um, in an email. So they can reference these notes and these attachments at a later time just by accessing their email. So if we're all done, we can click save, which will prompt to send the invite to the parent. So we'll click send. And then because the parents aren't part of our internal network, they're gonna be considered an external guest. <laughs> and that's okay, we say yes, invite external guest. And you'll see that it now appears on my calendar. If I fast forward for weeks to come, you'll see it appears on my calendar because we've set it up as a recurring event. So as the parent, the parent will receive an email that looks like this. It's an invitation and they can actually respond an RSVP within the email and say, yes, I'm attending. And once they click yes, that they're attending, you as the therapist will receive confirmation e email that says they've accepted. Now, if they've declined the event, uh, you sent them an invite and they declined it, you would receive a similar notice that would look like this. Very similar, it would just show that it's declined. So we've set it up. Let's say we need to make a change. We need to edit this meeting. We can do that by just clicking on the meeting in the calendar. A pop-up window appears and we're gonna click the pencil icon to edit. And from here, we can change anything. So you could change the recurrence. Maybe it's just gonna be once a week on Fridays. Uh, maybe we can't do 3.30, so we're gonna have to do 10 a.m. And maybe it's an, a full hour, things like that. So you can truly change anything. You can change the notes down here. You can add or remove attachments. You can change the notification reminders. And once you've made your changes, you'll just click save. And it's gonna ask you, because we've set it up as a recurring event, do I just wanna change this particular event on this date or do I wanna change for all events? 
I have an opportunity to add an additional note to the parent because um, they'll receive this notification. So if I want to add a note here, I can do that. And what they will receive is an updated invitation with those changes. So we've made those changes. You can see that George is now up here at 10 a.m. And it's just once a week. So let's cancel a meeting so we can show you what that looks like. Again, I just click on the meeting within the calendar. The pop-up window appears and I will click the garbage can delete icon. I can either just delete this event or all events. So to show you the example, I'm just gonna do this event. Maybe the parent, maybe they can't do this Thursday, but it's gonna be all the Thursdays to come, <laughs> for example. So I'm only gonna delete this event. Again, I can include an optional message. And now you can see it's removed from my calendar. But in weeks ahead, George is still there <laughs> for every Thursday at 10 a.m. So the parent will receive um, a canceled event notification in that scenario. So that is Google Calendar. Think about any questions you might have um, as we wrap up this topic. And we will now move to Google Meet. So we have set up our meeting for the session and we are ready to begin. So we are going to just click on the session. There's a, a Hangouts uh, Google Meet link that will appear and that's all we need. So the parent can do the same. They, if they have Google Calendar, they can access it the same way or just straight from their email. If they save their email, that link is always there. So that's all they need to join. So we are going to click on Join Hangouts Meet and we'll see the preview page. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. You'll see a preview of what your webcam view is. Now we haven't started the session yet. Um, and so in order to do that, we're gonna click Join Now. And it looks like my student is already there. So uh, let me show you around what this page looks like a little bit. The first thing I wanna point out is that Google Meet as a platform will open up in a, in a browser window or tab. So I have several tabs open within my Chrome browser currently and the, the Google Meet is active within a tab. Just important to note because as I navigate away from this page and I'm opening up different windows, um, in order to find my way back to the open session, I can find it here. And another uh, quick trick that you could do to kind of help keep tabs of it is if you take your mouse and sort of drag it away from the active browser window, you can create its own unique window. And from there you can resize and it's separated from the other tabs. And in that way, if you look down below, it's easier to, to find quickly, if that helps you. So I am going to make this bigger again. And so let's take you around the different functionalities. In the upper right-hand corner, I can click on this participant icon and see thumbnail views of participants. Right now it's just me and the student, so I could toggle between webcams. Um, and then in the lower left-hand corner, You'll notice, um, really before I get started, if I navigate away from the page, that taskbar disappears. So all I have to do is hover or click on the student's webcam and it pops right back up. <laughs> so um, lower left-hand corner, we can view the meeting details. If we get disconnected from the parent, um, I can quick and easy copy and paste uh, the link information. I can quickly reference any attachments that I had originally included in the invite. So that's helpful. In the center of the screen, we'll see both audio and um, microphone functions where we can turn on and off our audio and, and microphone. This is end call, which we don't wanna do just yet. 
So let's go all the way to the right lower hand side. Um, we have menu options here. And if I click settings, I can actually adjust the audio and video output and input here. So we might've done that in the computer itself, but you may need to check your settings within the platform. And if you're using a headset, this will likely be one and the same microphone and speaker, um, but it's a good place to just double check if you've got the right um, devices and you can test your devices there as well. And then other options that we have in this menu, we can change the layout. We can switch camera, which I just showed you how to do. And what we'll do next is share a screen. So likely, we're, right now we're video to video with the student, but likely you'll want to have interactive, um, engaging activities in your therapy session. So in that case, you may need to share your screen. And so we'll do that by clicking present now. And I have two options. I can click entire screen or just a specific window to share. And I'm gonna show you both so you see what they look like. I'm gonna do entire screen to start. Now I have two monitors, so I have to select one or the other and click share. And so I am now presenting. I know that by the icon down below. And if I change my layout, I can even see that more clearly. <clears throat> that I'm presenting. So in this case, I am presenting my entire screen, which could be um, many things. I might be pulling up different websites. I might be pulling up different applications to go through. And so for that reason, it's nice and easy to kind of toggle in between applications during your session, but it can be difficult to see both the student and your shared screen at the same time. So what I would recommend <clears throat> if you do use a full screen view is to have a second monitor so that you can see the side by side of the student and your shared activity together. And the other thing to be mindful of is just knowing that you're sharing your full screen, you've got to be careful of what private or um, confidential information might be in the background and you want to um, remove any pop-up notifications. So there's a bit of a risk when you share your full screen, so it's just something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna stop presenting so I can show you the other format. So we're back to video to video, and now let's just share a specific window. When I click this option, Google will show me all my different windows I've got up and available to, to share. Um, I wanna share this one, so I highlight and, and click share. So again, it tells me I'm presenting. But in this way, because I'm only sharing a window, which is this window here, I can very easily see both student and activity at the same time. So we can interact, have an activity. I can see the student all at once. And now I've done that by having my Google Meet window open, and I kind of have to fiddle a little bit with the other windows and overlay it on top of this Google Meet window, if that makes sense. So it kind of takes a little bit of play and a little bit of fiddling, but <laughs> once you do it once or twice, um, it's it becomes very natural, very easy to do so. So <clears throat> that way you can kind of got, you've you can achieve that side-by-side -side view. The other thing to keep in mind with when you're sharing just a window is that if you want to toggle to now another window, you've got to stop presenting and then start another window. And let's say I want to bring up, maybe it's this document, <laughs> for example. So every time I switch applications or windows, I'm gonna have to stop and start again. Let's say I wanna bring up this interactive. So I'll select this window. And it's already adjusted so I can kind of see both 
both the window and student. I can adjust the size if uh, the student needs it to be larger for them to see. And remember in the Google Meet platform, um, if you don't already know this, you maintain control of the mouse and keyboard at all times. There is not an option to share with the student. So if you're looking for interactive activities, you're gonna have to ask the student to answer the question and then you'll type the answer. Or you'll have to ask the student to guide you where to click on a particular activity and then you'll click. So it can still be very interactive, but you will main, can maintain control of those functions. Um, what else? Uh, let's see, I think that might be it. I just think um, more than anything, just to keep in mind, there's a lot of video conferencing platforms out there and the, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. And I think Google Meet is a fantastic platform. It's really easy to use. It's intuitive. It provides um, great stability, really great quality. And um, so it's the nuances in between that we kind of just have to figure out together, um, like maneuvering a, a window over another in order to achieve what you want, for example. So, or, or, or different ways to engage the student, um, things like that. So we've just got to get creative and kind of customize an approach that, that really does work for you. Um, you know, we're all in this together and we're figuring it out. <laughs> and I will say what's beautiful is that it is an amazing community to be a part of. So we will figure it out and we'll get there. So just keep an open mind and an open heart along the way as you, um, learn a new system. It's not always easy, but we're here to help if you have any questions at all. Um, to end this Google Meet, all we have to do is click end call, but I really want to highlight the importance of this because remember, it's just in a Google win uh, a browser window, right? So if you've navigated away and you're over here on your calendar, if this red button is still on, that session is still open. So as soon as your therapy session ends, it is incredibly important that you end the call because otherwise your student will continue to have access to your shared screens, to your webcam, and we can't have that. And um, on another note, your district might be gathering report data from the back end of uh, the software for um, session data, things like that in terms of duration. So, so there's many reasons why it's important to end the call. Just be mindful of that and make sure you end the call and then it is done. So I think for our session, for our webinar, um, as I said, just to regroup, we've covered these four topics. I'm gonna share this step-by-step -step guide with you, which includes these um, uh, labs or sort of a self-checklist. I just can't encourage you enough to practice. Get a friend or a family member and have them help you out. Um, if you don't have that option available, you are welcome to invite me to a session, five to 10 minutes, and we can practice and play with it together. You've just got to get um, familiar with it so that you're comfortable navigating around the calendar, the meet function, the window, opening up and sharing different windows, things like that. So that when you're in your therapy session, you don't have to worry about it. And again, you can really focus on the therapy, focus on the student and not get so hung up on, on some of these technical things. So my biggest advice is to practice. And I'm happy to help do a practice play therapy session with you. Um, you'll receive this guide, uh, this self-checklist, and I believe that's it. I um, will have my contact information. I'm going to be reaching out individually to each and every one of you with these attachments and with my contact info. So we will be happy to help. I hope you all stay healthy and safe. And um, thank you so much for all you're doing. All right, y'all have a good one. Thanks so much.